decorations and information. Now the rules are pretty simple. I'm going to give you guys a series of elephant statements. And all you have to do is shout out if you think it's fact or fiction and we will reveal the answer down here. As you can see, I'm not alone on stage. This is an elephant education show, so please give a warm welcome for Bud the Bull African Elephant. He's 31 years old and is the largest member of our herd. He stands at 10 foot 9 inches in the shoulder and weighs an impressive 16,000 pounds. Just to give you a reference, that equals our 8 Clydesdale Hitch. Accompanying Bud today is one of his trainers. Everybody please say hi to Katie. We train our elephants using mostly positive reinforcement through operant conditioning. The elephants are given a series of visual and verbal cues, and if they respond correctly, they will receive a reward. And the most common reinforcers that we use are through food and praise. Now, Katie's going to take care of the food part, but we're going to ask you guys to take care of the praise part. Anytime you see Bud doing something you really like, please give him lots of praise in the form of cheering and clapping. Let's practice. Would you ask that you please try not to stomp your feet on the bleachers? Bud's ears are extremely sensitive and he really dislikes this noise. Mine too. Is everyone ready to get started? Great. Okay. So first round, fact or fiction, African elephants have larger ears than Asian elephants because Africa is closer to the equator. What do you think? I heard mostly fact and this is true. Asia is further away from the equator. This means that their temperatures are lower and compared to African temperatures. Asian elephants' ears have, are small and round, and African elephants have larger ears, and it's actually shaped in the continent of Africa. Each ear weighs about 100 pounds. This equals about one-sixth of their entire body weight. A full-grown elephant, adult el African elephants' ears can be as long as six feet and as wide as four. But showing off his ears for you right now. Now, African elephants cannot sweat like we can, so in order for them to cool their bodies, they need to flap their ears. They have very big blood vessels on the backs of their ears and very thin skin. This allows them to circulate their blood, and all of the heat from their blood is released into the environment, overall cooling the blood. And this blood will circulate through their body and cool their core temperature up to 16 degrees. African elephant ears are also used as identification for researchers. They will identify and write down every nick, tear, scratch, and also vein pattern for Bud. Let's give him a round of applause for showing them your love. Great. Okay, so next round, fact or fiction. Elephants use their trunks like a periscope reaching high into the air to survey their environment. What do you think? I'm hearing a bunch. Who says fact? Who says fiction? Who says I don't really care, let's just keep this, the game going? <laughs> a couple of you. It's actually fact. An elephant's trunk is a combination of their nose and their upper lip. When you see an elephant reaching their trunk into the air, they're gathering all these scents. The scents travel through their trunk up to a specialized gland at the top of their mouth called the Jacobson organ. And this allows elephants to detect food and water up to 12 miles away. Elephants' favorite foods are also usually high up in trees, so they'll reach up really high in order to grab those tree, those uh, fruits down, just like that, except you'd be reaching a lot higher. <laughs> An average elephant's trunk um, can reach up to 20 feet, but Bud is not average. He can reach 23 feet. You guys want to see it? Let's give him some positive reinforcement for that. Let's give him a response. It's going to be a big stretch for him. Let's keep that going. actually have over a hundred thousand muscles in their trunk and then being able to knock down the fruit at the top of the trees is the reason why they're known as a keystone species this means that elephants positively affect the ecosystem around them so as they knock the fruit down on the ground smaller herbivores can come and eat off of the fruit next round fact or fiction elephants daily activities have an enormous effect on the african ecosystem what do you think this is a fact. Like I had said before, I kind of gave it away. Elephants are known as the keystone species. 
Um, some examples of how they are keystone species is they can dig in the ground using their tusks for water. By providing a watering hole for their herd, they're also providing a fresh water source for other animals around them. They can also provide food, like I had mentioned before, by pushing over trees for smaller herbivores and aiding seed dispersal through their waste. It's obvious then that if the overall population of elephants is not thriving in the wild, that the overall health of the ecosystem around it is in great jeopardy, and this is currently what's going on in Africa today. The poaching crisis for elephants has reached an all-time high, and experts say that an average of 96 elephants are lost a day due to the increase in demand for ivory, and that by year 2020, elephants may no longer exist. But there is um, some hope there's a way that we can help save elephants even while living in St. Louis. One of them is by decreasing our waste. Grant's Farm promotes recycling and has receptacles all throughout the park. As you guys can see, recycling is so easy that even an elephant can do it. So you have no excuse to not recycle. Let's give a round of applause for saving the earth. Another way that you can help save the elephants is through education. You guys are doing it right now by sitting here and listening to elephant conservation. If you'd like to know more about the plight of these species, some organizations that we like are the Elephant Managers Association and the International Elephant Foundation. And by educating ourselves, we can educate others around us to not buy ivory and hopefully extinguish the demand for it all together. Okay, moving on to our next round. Fact or fiction, elephants can breathe 310 liters of air in one minute. What do you think? This is a fact. You guys are a very smart crowd. Bud not only uses his trunk to eat and drink, he also uses it to breathe. And an elephant's nose is also a combination of their nose and their upper lip. Now for this next round, I'm gonna need a couple of kid volunteers. So if anybody wants to come, raise your hand. Oh, Gabriel. So many. So good. How about the girl in the tie-dye shirt all the way up there with the ponytail? You can come on down. And oh, we have someone's birthday. You want to come on down? And I need one more boy or one boy. Go ahead, Gabriel. Another birthday? Okay. The the birthday boy can come on down too. Let's give him a round of applause. They're gonna make their way down. Molly, what's your name? Emily, and what's your name? Emma, okay, and what's your name? Austin, you guys can come on in, happy birthday. You guys can follow me in over here. Put your backs against this fence, wave hi, everybody say happy birthday and hi. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you guys. Do you think you're good at breathing? I hope so, because you've been doing it your whole lives, right? <laughs> well, Bud has challenged you to a balloon race. So we're going to see who can blow these balloons up the fastest. You or Bud. But because I'm in such a great mood today, I'm going to give you guys a head start. Does that sound fair? Does that sound fair, audience? Bud? Bud, that's rude. Bud says no. Well... Thankfully for you guys, he's not running the show, man. Just because it's your birthday, I'm gonna give you guys a head start. Yeah, he's okay with that since it's your birthday. <laughs> so on the count of three, we're gonna blow the balloons up as fast as we can. And audience, you're gonna cheer for them the whole entire time, right? Oh, I need more convincing than that, right? You're gonna cheer for them the whole time? Great, okay. So one, two, three, let's blow those balloons as fast as we can. Let's hear from our audience. Okay, we're gonna make this interesting. Let me hear all the guys. Who's rooting for the guys? Let's hear it. Such a great job. We kind of had it rigged from the beginning. Bud was going to win. But let's, let's hear it for him. Yeah, it's such a great job. I'll let you guys out of here. Thank you so much and happy birthday again. 
looks like someone got to take Bud's balloon home. Fact or fiction, that's full of hot, stinky elephant breath. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Bud says fact. Try not to pop it on your way home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is everyone ready for the next round? Great. Fact or fiction, elephants perform tricks. What do you think? Yeah, so <laughs> he kind of gave it away. Elephants do not perform tricks, they perform natural behaviors. If we use the word trick, that implies that we're trying to deceive you guys, which is not what we're trying to do. Everything you see down here is a natural behavior. For example, Bud can breathe. Nobody taught him how to breathe, but we took that natural behavior, we captured it, we put it on cue, and we showed it to you guys in the form of him blowing up that balloon to educate you guys and show what a great breather he is. So, Katie, Bud knows zero tricks, right? Oh, he knows two tricks. Do you guys want to see Bud's tricks? Okay, first trick, there is an orange. Bud can make that orange disappear before your eyes. Oh, give a round of applause. We have, the next trick's a little bit better, I promise. We have some props. Katie has a magic hat, and she's going to say the magic words over the hat for Bud, and he's going to pull it out. Let's see what you have in that hat, Bud. He pulled a rabbit out of the hat. don't know any tricks, they're all natural behaviors. So I think we have time for one more round of fact or fiction. What do you think, bud? One more? Great, awesome. Okay, so fact or fiction. A herd of elephants is also known as a parade. What do you think? Fact. You guys are awesome. You guys are one of the smartest crowds I've had. This is a fact. A herd of elephants is, a co is made up of related females. So this includes the mothers, the daughters, the grandmothers, the aunts, and all of the children. And they're also led by one head matriarch. She's usually the oldest and the wisest in the herd. She knows where to find the food, the water, and also all of the migration patterns. And as the males grow up older and reach sexual maturity, they will leave the herd and join smaller bachelor herds and then meet up with the females later on during mating season. Now I need one more volunteer who'd like to come down and be part of my herd. Oh goodness, there's so many. How about the boy in the orange shirt with the buzz cut sitting next to the man in the blue? Yes, you, you can come on down. Let's give him a round of applause. Hi, what's your name? What's your name? Hassan, and what's your name? Ethan, nice to meet you. You guys can come on in with me. Come on in. Okay, I'll let you guys in over here. Here's my family. There's Suzanne. Put your hands against this fence, everybody. Wave high and high to the audience. Jacqueline's okay. behind Gabriel. Do so you guys think that Bud did a really good job today? Do you think Bud did a good job today? Yeah, he thinks so too. <laughs> so one of the ways we're gonna let him know he did such a great job is by giving him some positive reinforcement. We're gonna give him some food, because he loves food. So you guys are gonna come over here with me. I'm gonna hand you these oranges. And then hold on one second. One by one, we're gonna come over behind this fence. You're gonna hold your hand out, and he's gonna come and take it. So you can go first. Right here, on this side of the fence, right here. There you go, now hold it out and put it in his trunk. Nice job. Okay, now come on over here. Awesome, now you guys can stand right over here and wait to the audience. Stand for pictures, stand over. Face the audience over here. <laughs> You're fine, Liz. Face the audience over here and wait. Let's hear from my, from my brave volunteers one more time. Thank you so much. There you go. So unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today, but Bud would like to do one more thing before you guys leave, and that is to wave goodbye to all of his new herd mates.